When it comes to controlling your vehicle, ultimately it comes down to your tires. Whether you're trying to speed up, slow down or change direction, it's your tires that are gripping the road and making it happen. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what you need to know about these black round things we have on our wheels so that you can stay safe and get the most out of your vehicle. Fortunately, this video is sponsored by Michelin because they are a very established tire manufacturer and I got to spend a whole day with them at Hariba Mira, which is one of the places where they test tires. That way I could update and refresh my knowledge to hopefully make an accurate video. However, a lot of the footage I took on the day I can't use because there are vehicles driving around that are yet to be unveiled to the public and every time I took out a camera someone was over my shoulder saying oh you can't film that or you can't use that so a lot of the footage I filmed I can't use but I did get the knowledge and that's the important bit. This advice can save you money and help make your car handle in a more predictable manner. Most cars in Great Britain are front wheel drive so the front tyres do the accelerating they do the steering and they actually do more of the braking than the rear tires. So these are gonna wear out more quickly. Now, many people believe you should put the newest rubber on the driven axle at the front in a front wheel drive car because that's gonna give you more grip. However, what you should do is when the front tires wear out is replace the tires then take the front wheels with the new tires on them, move them to the back of the car and then take the rear wheels with the old tires on them and move them to the front of the car. That way, you always have the newest tires at the rear of the vehicle. So why go to all this effort then? Well, it's safety. At Mira with Michelin, I was testing the difference between the two different setups. Exactly the same car, two exactly the same, Mark 8 Golfs, new tires at the rear or new tires at the front. When the new tires were at the rear and the worn tires were at the front, I couldn't get the car to spin. I would toss it in, lift off the throttle to try and induce lift off oversteer and the car would not spin. I got some understeer, but that was easy to handle. The car didn't spin out and scare the driver. Fairly easy, you're turning too much, you're going too fast, the front end isn't quite steering as much as you want to slow down, that's understeer. Whereas when I switched into the other car, with the new tires at the front, yes, I had a bit more front end grip, but then the back would just come around. I didn't even need to provoke a spin. I could just turn the wheel, go faster and faster and faster, and eventually the back end would come around and it would go into a spin, but the car's electronic stability control would act and stop the car from doing a complete spin. So having new tires at the rear makes the car more predictable and easy to handle for most drivers because a lot of drivers are gonna struggle to control a spin but they're not gonna to struggle to control a little bit of understeer if they go too fast. Also, you can get better value for money because on a front wheel drive car, the rear wheels take ages, or the rear tires take ages to wear out and you run the risk of them expiring where the tires get too old that they're no longer fit for purpose and they fail the MOT. Cracks can start forming in them, for example. So if you put those old tires at the front, you actually get to use that rubber before it expires and therefore you get better value for money. You can't do this with all vehicles though because some vehicles have different size tires at the front and the rear, particularly rear wheel drive vehicles, but the vast majority of cars in Great Britain have the same size tires on all four corners. What Michelin are trying to do is they're trying to educate tyre fitters to suggest this to the customer and I know why because I've known this since I started driving. If my front tyres wear out and I replace the front tyres, I put those wheels on the rear if I can. But explaining that to a tyre fitter is often difficult. They don't understand what I'm trying to tell them to do and they even get me to write it down sometimes when really they should be explaining that to the customer. This wasn't recommended by Michelin, but I did ask, can you rotate the tires? This is something I do on my MX-5. It has the same size tires all the way round. And what I do is I keep switching the front with the rear and the rear of the front to try and get the tires to wear evenly. So then when I come to replace them, I can replace the full set. So I have four new tires. It's more expensive to do it that way, but there's a reason why I like to do this. Now Michelin didn't recommend this for the average motorist, but for someone who is into driving and takes their car on track, then it can be a good idea. Because in rotating the tires regularly, which takes time and effort, your tires wear down at a similar rate. Therefore, your car maintains the handling characteristics it was supposed to have from factory. 
Having more worn tyres at the front means your car is more likely to understeer. Having more worn tyres at the rear means your car is more likely to oversteer, which for a road car, you probably want to go with the understeer. But if you're trying to maintain the factory specifications of how your car is supposed to handle, then you're actually better off rotating the tyres regularly to wear them out more evenly. The trouble is when it comes to replacing them, you're going to have to replace all four at once, which is a lot more expensive. Another reason why I like to rotate my tyres on my MX-5 is because I'm quite particular and I want to have the same make and model of tyres on all four corners. At the moment it has Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres and Michelin bought out the Pilot Sport 5 and when I replace the tyres I want them all to be Pilot Sport 5. I don't want to just replace two and have two of the newer model tyre. So therefore me rotating the tyres and getting them to wear out in one go means I'll have four new tyres that are exactly the same. Something that's worth noting though, is when I'm talking about front tires being more worn than the rear or vice versa, I am talking about wet conditions here. In the dry, you're not gonna notice much of a difference. It's only really in the wet where that difference in tread depth becomes apparent. One of the worst things you can do, and I can understand why you would do this, I've done it myself, when you can't afford to replace two tires. In fact, you can't really afford to replace one tire and you get a puncher and that is to only replace one tire, particularly when it's at the front and the other tire at the front is more than 50% worn. Now you have a car that's gonna handle very unpredictably at the limit. We tried this at Mirror as well, and the car just wasn't predictable as to when it was gonna understeer or oversteer. At least when the worn tires were at the front, I knew it would understeer, and when the worn tires were at the rear, I could see it's gonna oversteer and I could well, I knew what was going to happen. I could control it better. But with one new tire at the front, that was the hardest car to handle of them all. And at speed, and I have personal experience of this, the car doesn't want to stay in a straight line because you've got one tire at the front that's actually slightly bigger than the other because it's got a deeper tread depth, so it's slightly thicker. And therefore, it creates more drag and the car wants to pull to one side. And you may even go down the route of spending money trying to figure out why that's happening, doing your tracking, looking into your suspension. Why is my car pulling to one side? Actually, it's just because you've got one new tire at the front and one old tire. When I get a puncher, what I do is I find out if I can get it repaired safely. Often I can. That way I get to use the remaining tread depth for that tire and not worry about replacing two tires because of one puncher. To know when to change your tires, you need to understand your tread depth. This is your tread and you need to measure the central 75%. So from about here, to here and these grooves should be at least 1.6 millimeters deep in Great Britain and we have these handy little tread depth indicators here which are 1.6 millimeters high so when the tire wears down to them you know you're at the legal limit or you can use a tire tread depth gauge one of these push that down so the needle comes out the bottom put the needle in the tread push it down so it's level with the tread. Now the needle is as deep as the tread and then it will tell you how much tread you have, 6.2 millimeters. And then you need to check the sidewalls to make sure there's no cuts or bulges in the sidewalls. Check both sides, reach around and check the inside as well. There should be no cuts or bulges there too, but it does get pretty dirty back there. So when you do that, you will need to wash your hands. Now, of course, don't just check one part of the wall or one part of the tread, check all the way around both walls, outside and inside and all of the tread right the way around, all four tires, including the spare. And I'll leave a link in the description to one of these tread depth gauges. Now, what I've been doing over the years is replacing my tires when they get down to three millimeters of tread, because I've been told that 1.6 millimeters is the legal limit, but three millimeters is the sensible limit. And when I said this to Michelin, I was actually quite surprised by the response. They said, I'm throwing away tires with thousands of miles of life left in them because their tires are tested right the way down to the 1.6 millimeter limit. That's what Michelin say, of course, I can't speak for other tire manufacturers. Earlier, I said that if you get a puncture, it's likely you will be able to repair it. However, if you damage the sidewall, you can't repair the sidewall which is why it's so important not to brush your tires up against the curb. When you're parking forwards next to the curb, you can't see the tire and you can't see the curb. 
I'm sitting in a car right now and I can't see either of those things. I can just see the dashboard. It is a guess, it's judgment. So on the way forwards, what I tend to do is park roughly close whilst being sure I'm not going to hit it. And then I put it in reverse and I use the mirror to precisely line the car up with the curb because in the mirror I can see the car and I can see the curb and I know exactly where it is. That way I don't risk hitting the curb. It's important not to brush your tires along the curb because it can pinch the side wall of your tire causing damage. It can cause a cut, it can cause a bulge, or it can cause damage that you can't see. Either way, when you're traveling at speed, it can suddenly fail and cause a horrible accident if you're going fast, and that can cost lives. So it's very important to look after your tires. These kinds of curbs are better. They're a bit friendly, but I still avoid hitting them because they can still cause damage. But these kinds of curbs are absolutely lethal and either a minor, very minor scrape along one of these curbs can seriously damage your tire. Now I know you all do this, don't you? Staying on top of your tire pressures. You can find the correct pressures in your owner's manual and you should check them when the tires are cold. Some cars have them in the door jam around there and some like this one have them behind the fuel filler flap. It's important not to rely on your tire pressure monitoring systems because they're not always that great. And if you have an ABS style system, it's not gonna notice if all four tires are losing pressure at about the same rate, which is a normal thing that's gonna happen just from losing the pressure naturally or if you change altitude or if the weather changes. Michelin went to CarFest 2023. This is a place where car enthusiasts go, people who look after their cars, and they tested 640 tires and 44% of them were underinflated by four PSI or more. Underinflated tires increase your rolling resistance, which means you use a bit more fuel, but also the edges of the tire wear more quickly than the center, so you don't get as much life out of your tires and you spend more money on your tires and your fuel. If you overinflate the tires, you may save a bit on fuel because it reduces your rolling resistance, but then the center of your tire wears more quicker than the edges, so you end up spending more money on tires. Now, I just glossed over the fact that the outside temperature and your altitude affect the tire pressures. So when the outside temperature goes down, your tire pressures go down. Outside temperature goes up, tire pressures go up. If you go up in altitude, your tire pressures go up. When you come down in altitude, your tire pressures come down. So if the outside temperature changes or your altitude changes, that's a good time to check your tire pressures. I'm in one of two identical VW Golfs. They're exactly the same, same tires. Yes, they're a different color, but the important difference is that one of them has the correct tire pressures, that's this one, and the gray one, the tire pressures on that are 15 PSI too low. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna roll to 10 miles an hour and see how far this car rolls at 10 miles an hour in neutral with the correct tire pressures. So I'm at 10 now and neutral. Okay, it's just coming to a stop and that is a stop. Not quite yet, it's still rolling. There we go, I'll just put the brake on and uh, put the parking brake on. Let's see how far we've gone and then I'll compare it to the tires that are 15 PSI under pressure. So there's my cone. Now I'm gonna do it in the car with the lower tire pressures and see where I stop. So this is the gray car with tire pressures 15 PSI lower clutch down now into neutral at the cones and let's see how far I roll Michelin cross climate two tires trying to keep the car as straight as possible and trying to do as close to as exactly the same as I did last time I can already feel I'm slowing down earlier so that's where I stopped and actually I was doing 12 miles an hour I went a tiny bit over by accident but yeah even though I was going faster the yellow cone is where I stopped with the tyres that were correctly inflated. Quite a long way. I asked Michelin for their advice on tyre pressures when driving on track. What I tend to do is not allow them to go 15% above the cold set pressures. But when I told them that, they said I should be chasing the cold pressure. So as the tyres get hot and the pressure goes up, let the air out and don't let it go above the cold set pressure. Of course, it's gonna go above it as you're driving, but then keep bringing it down and chase that cold pressure. 
What's really bad is if you allow the pressures to go up at the front more than the rear or vice versa, because then your car's not gonna handle as it should. Or you can play with that difference between the pressure at the front and the rear to make the car more likely to understeer or oversteer. Earlier I said tires expire, yet in Great Britain, there's no official expiry date. And I think that's because it's fairly obvious when they're too old and bad, the compound starts to change. They go hard, cracks start to form, and when the cracks get bad enough, they fail the MOT anyway. It's like taking food out of the fridge that's moldy and needing a date to know not to eat it. It's moldy, don't eat it. However, if you look at the side of the tire, they are dated. There's four numbers. The first two are the week number and the second two are the year number. So these tires were created on week 20 of 2024. Generally, I don't let tires get more than six years old because that's what I've been advised in the past. When I asked Michelin, they said tires can perform up to 10 years, but it does depend on conditions. If cracks start to form, then you need to replace the tires. Some vehicles are available with OE tires. An OE tire is when a tire manufacturer modifies one of their tires to suit a specific vehicle. For example, the Porsche N rated tire. The tire manufacturer has made changes to that tire to make that Porsche handle as best as it can. And it's not a five minute job. Lots of time and testing has taken place to modify that tire, sometimes the compound, sometimes the structure, sometimes both, to make that tire best suited to that specific vehicle. So if your vehicle is available with OE tires, I recommend checking them out or you may be missing out. When it comes to choosing your tires, make sure you choose the correct tire for the conditions and how you drive. You have your summer tires, which are good for above seven degrees Celsius. You have your winter tires, which are good for below seven degrees Celsius. And then you have your all seasons, which try to do both. Although many people complain that they don't really do either very well. Michelin have the Cross Climate 2, which is what they call dual rated because it's good in the summer and it's also free peak mountain snowflake rated. So it's good in snowy and wintry conditions also. Within the summer tires, you have different categories anyway. You have your touring tire, which is for comfort and lower noise, and then your ultra high performance tire, or your ultra, ultra high performance tire for even more performance, and even your track tire, which isn't great for the road and should really be best used if you're mainly using the car on track. You can also get off-road tires and different variations of off-road tires. Some are like 50-50, 50% on-road, 50% off-road, and tires that are more specifically for off-road and they won't be very good on-road. But choose the type of tire that's gonna suit where and how you're driving your vehicle. In wintry or snowy conditions, tires are generally more important than whether you have two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. If you have four-wheel drive, you still have four-wheel brakes, so your braking isn't any better. You still have your front wheels that do the steering, so your steering isn't any better. What is better is your ability to accelerate because all four wheels are pushing the vehicle. However, in test after test, it has shown that a two-wheel drive vehicle with winter tires performs better in the snow than a four-wheel drive vehicle with summer tires. Now, I don't think this is actually gonna help anyone, but it was fun, so I'm going to include it anyway. But if you happen to find yourself in a BMW M2 being driven by a test driver around a bank circuit, 130 miles an hour pulling 2G, you need to increase your tire pressures because on a bank circuit, that force, that G-force is actually pushing the vehicle into the floor. So the vehicle's actually heavier and therefore you need higher tire pressures to prevent the tires from delaminating. In this instance, the tire pressures were overinflated by one bar. Here's the footage. Oh, okay, this yep. is 2G apparently. <laughs> I'm trying to hold the camera up. And is it again there? 150 miles an hour nearly. 130 miles an hour taking what feels like a very tight bend. Feeling the bolster of the seat, keeping me upright. I asked him if I could drive and they said no. If you found the video interesting, please give it a thumbs up. And I'd like to thank Michelin for helping me make this video. Also, I have Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres on my MX-5 and they seem to be lasting a lot longer than my previous premium brand set of tyres and they still have over 3 mil of tread left and they're working well at that lower tread 
also. My favorite thing about them though, is how they behave when I go beyond the limit. Now I only do this on track, I don't do this on the road, but if I skid the car and slide the car, it does so in a more fun and progressive way, not a spiky, scary way. So overall, I have more fun in the car. I went to Michelin for this because I'm happy with their product. They didn't come to me. So thank you, Michelin. Subscribe to get my future videos. And until the next one, cheerio.